how it is slowly turning into some kind of commodity. People are really selling this spiritual idea. People are really creating whole businesses around it. All right, hey guys. Welcome back to another video on the Flow of Consciousness YouTube channel. Now, I asked a friend if she had a topic in mind that I could share my thoughts on. And she told me that she would be interested in hearing my thoughts on the current law of attraction trends and how it is slowly turning into some kind of commodity. People are really selling this spiritual idea. People are really creating whole businesses around it. People are desperately looking for ways to gain control over their lives because they feel so not in control, right? The pandemic situation, all the changes in rules. Can I see my friends? Can I not see my friends? Can I go out? Can I not go out? Will I be able to earn money next month? All this uncertainty. People are extremely anxious and afraid. And if there is then something that can create the hope of gaining at least some kind of control by trying to manifest things into your life. This is a very promising and alluring thing to sell. And a law of attraction, it's a complex topic, right? And most people, for them, myself included, when I first started to read about it, is that, okay, you have to let go of what you want in order for you to be in a vibrational state where you actually attract it. Now, it's so backwards because you want to let it go because you want it. So it actually means that you want it. So there is this paradoxical nature around law of attraction. And the danger is that once people start to believe that they can manifest whatever in their lives that they want, anything in their lives they want. And when they don't succeed, they suffer even more. And then they want to fix that solution by paying some kind of guru who supposedly going to teach them how to manifest the right way. I think that's a skewed system. It's a, almost like a taking advantage of vulnerable people who are just struggling to figure out their lives, right? So I believe that the ideas surrounding the law of attraction, they can be useful in the sense that, yes, letting go of a perverted desire or something that you latch onto so strongly that nothing else matters, it will cause you not to have it because you're just so focused on getting it that it will push away the natural flow of life. It will scare away the natural flow of life that would be necessary for it to actually present you with the thing that you so badly crave, right? It's like when you're extremely needy towards someone, it's actually repelling them because they feel like you are trying to control their attention, their time, their affection. People want to have the illusion that they are free, that they can make free choices. And when you are so needy or so desperate for something, it feels like a prison almost. So of course people tend to reject it. It's the same thing with just about anything. If you're so desperate and needy about money, then you will behave in such a way that money will not come your way, right? So these ideas, they can be very useful for you to become aware of the areas where you want stuff too much so that you are actually resisting it, right? So you want to be able to let go of this craving, of this intense need. But I do believe that you don't want to let go of your desire for something. Some groups of people, they are so against desire. They are almost shaming desire. They say that desire is the worst thing you can actually want but what they don't understand is that not desiring anything is also a desire so i believe that cultivating desire in a healthy way can actually be tremendously beneficial if you know how to apply it in your life to actually guide you towards the things that you desire it can serve 
as guiding posts. It can serve as a direction where you can conduct your life towards, right? So your desire is like a, like a goal almost, or like a, like a northern star, if you will, that can guide you towards something. So it's not a bad thing. It can give you direction and purpose in your life. So it's a useful concept. So trying to let go of desire, it's also a desire. So desire is always going to be there. I don't think you can be completely desireless because if you want to be completely desireless, then that's again a desire. Now, you just want to be aware of people who are trying to abuse the law of attraction ideas in order for their own personal gain. I can see it everywhere, you know, in these Facebook groups, people are like, oh, do you want to manifest money into your life? Contact me on this number or manifest your, your twin flame or your personal, I don't know, uh, romantic partner, this and that. It's, it's just a way for people to escape the reality of life, which requires patience, which requires persistence, which requires discipline, which requires personal development. I believe that if you want to attract money in your life, then it's not going to come your way by just sitting on the couch, letting go of your desire for money. No, desire for money is a good thing. You can go out there and actually create value for people and that way the money will come to you. So it's not bad to want to gain money, to have a desire for money. If you make sure that there is an exchange of value, there's an exchange of energy. Same thing with a partner. If you want love and affection in your life, it's okay to want that. There's a lot of things you can actually proactively do in order to maximize your potential or your chances to attract a partner, right? You can take care of yourself, uh, make sure that you shower, that you keep your house clean, that you eat healthy, that you develop skills, that you, whatever, that you, that you practice being kind, that you practice your communication, you can read books. There's a shitload of stuff you can do to maximize your chances to actually meet a partner that you connect with, that you resonate with. On top of that, you also have to put yourself out there by sitting inside your house, not doing anything, just wishing that they will end up in your lap. Well, I think that the chance that your twin flame is going to end up in your lap like that is around 0%, maybe 0.001%. I don't know, who knows? But you want to, do you, look, let me ask you this question. Do you really want to sit and wait? Or do you want to grow, be proactive, and then increase your chances to actually get what you want by consciously making a decision to move towards the thing you desire? Isn't it a lot more empowering to know that you actually have agency, that you actually can take action towards building the life that you want? for yourself? I think it's an important question to ask yourself. So to wrap it up, the ideas presented in Law of Attraction, and I am not an expert on this. I have read a few books, I talk with a few people, so of course it's a very general idea that I have around this topic. But I feel like so many people are using it as a way to avoid responsibility. Oh. You know, as long as I just let go of my desire and I let go of the resistance towards the thing that I want, it will magically end up in my life. I don't believe that's true. I believe that you still need to proactively make decisions that will move you closer to that goal while letting go of the intense craving and need for that thing. You Desiring want something, wanting something, I believe it's a good thing if you can release the resistance around it, if you can want it, but you don't need it. You see the difference? I want to have something, but I don't need it in order for me to feel like I live the life that I want to live. I want it, yes, I can move towards it, but it's not a necessity. And I think that's a crucial distinction. So you want to be aware of the difference and you want to let go of this intense need it's a nice bonus it's a bonus that you want but it's not a bonus that you need so on that note i will end this video and i will thank you for being brave i will thank you for taking the time to listen to my thoughts
And as always, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.